Hi, this is Nancy Reed and continuing the ophthalmology lecture series for University of Lynchburg's Master's of Physician Assistant Studies. This next section is extraocular movement pathology or disconjugate gaze pathology is another term for it and amblyopia. And these are two distinct different um, conditions but they kind of go hand in hand, and uh, I'll explain that to you in a little, little more in just a bit. So what we're going to talk about in this lecture series is strabismus, amblyopia, and a condition called, or a, a, a sign called nystagmus. So the picture in this slide is just a reminder of the rectus muscles and the oblique muscles and where they attach on the eye. If you remember back to the ophthalmology review uh, section one we talked about the distance of where those muscles sit on the eye in in um, coordination with the uh, pupil and the iris and if they're out of line the eye is going to pull a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right or up or down and it's going to cause um, double vision and the brain does not like to see double vision uh, and it can't put that together so the brain will shut one of the eyes off so strabismus is a crossed eye, and if you guys have ever seen the, the movie Waterboy, um, uh, the guy in Waterboy who um, has the crossed eye, that's a typical presentation. Uh, the disorder is in which, uh, in which two of the, the two eyes don't line up in the same direction, and then for, therefore they do not look at the same object at the same time, and it produces amblyopia, or it pr produces double vision, which then can go on and produce amblyopia because the brain will shut off the bad eye to get rid of the double vision. So there are lots of different causes for um, strabismus. Um, a lot of times the problem has to do with muscle control. It can um, have to do with where the uh, muscle attaches to the eye. And it can also be due to nerve palsies where uh, the nerve does not innervate the muscle. And on physical exam, there are th three physical exam techniques that you may or may not have discussed previously in physical diagnosis. And that's the cover-uncover test, the cover-cross-cover test, and the Hirschberg's corneal light test. And we're going to watch a video here in just a second um, that uh, explains these a little bit more. And the treatment for this is patching. We want to patch the good eye to force the bad eye to work so that uh, hopefully normal visual acuity can develop in that eye. Um, sometimes surgical interventions are appropriate. Let's say the eye muscle is misplaced on the eye. If you cut the muscle and move it um, into the correct position, hopefully the eye will realign. Um, but again, it, depending on what the, ca the actual underlying cause for the strabismus is, is that's how you target your treatment. So with strabismus, um, there are esotrophias and exotrophias, and esophorias and exophorias. So aphoria and atrophia, I like to tell people, aphoria, the the laziness or the drifting of the eye comes and goes with atrophia it's always there so the way i have people kind of keep this straight is once you win a trophy you put it up on your shelf the trophy is always there trophy is always there so it's kind of like tropia and then if you have a euphoric feeling a euphoric feeling comes and goes so that's trophia and phoria so Ezo means that the eye turns inward. So here on the picture, um, this uh, child's eye is turning inward. So that's Ezo. And then there's Exo, where the eye turns outward. So sometimes people will call this wall-eyed. And you could also have hypertrophia or hypotrophia. So the eye can go up or the eye can go down and it's permanent like that. Or if it's temporary like that, it's hyperphoria and hypophoria. So lots of different types of strabismus. So what I want you to do now is I want you to pause the video and I want you to go to the YouTube video 
um, by Tim Root. Tim Root does an amazing job with all things ophthalmology and he has multiple multiple um, YouTube videos posted. Um, we're gonna watch the one on trophias and phorias and he's gonna explain to you a little bit more about cross cover and uncover. I would tell you when he starts talking about prism and diopters, you don't have to worry too much about that. That's more of uh, ophthalmologist or uh, optometry function and that's when they're trying to fix these. As physician assistants, um, generally we don't try to fix these things, we're just, it's important that we diagnose them. So you have to understand how to do the cross cover tests the Uncover Test and the Hirschberg's Light. And um, I think this video does a really good job. Unfortunately, I'm not there to demonstrate it to you in person, but I found this video and I think he does an excellent job of going over those three tests. And you need to do these in a pediatric, in your pediatric population specifically because a delayed diagnosis of strabismus can cause permanent vision loss. So what I want you to do is go ahead and pause the video now and uh, click over to this other YouTube um, channel and watch the video by Tim Root for Trophias and Phorias. Okay, I hope that that video was very informative and it helps um, kind of delineate uh, Trophias and Phorias for you and helps explain strabismuth just a little bit more. So if a child has strabismus and it's not corrected, then they can develop a condition called lazy eye or amblyopia. And basically amblyopia is really a loss or lack of development in central vision in one of the eyes. And one of the things that we do to treat this is we do patching to force the bad eye to work and it turns off the good eye. So hopefully, normal central vision can uh, be developed in a child who has amblyopia. And it's very, very important to catch these kids before the age of five. At the age of five, once you hit that age, um, it, it's really hard to impact um, the outcome of amblyopia because those the connections in the brain have already developed. So there are multiple causes of amblyopia. Um, Certainly, one of the most prominent causes is strabismus that we just went over, but also you can have a deprivational cause, meaning the eye doesn't work like it's supposed to um, because of a, a, a restriction such as a congenital cataract. So we talked about cataract a little bit. It's that lens that is cloudy. If you can't get light into the back of the eye, then the visual acuity um, and cranial nerve 2 cannot develop those pathways back to the brain that's needed. And then one other cause for amblyopia is a large refractive error. So let's say somebody has their severely nearsighted in one eye or severely farsighted in one eye. That large refractive error, the brain can't put that together either, so the brain will shut off one of the eyes. So again, strabismus um, if not corrected, causes the brain to shut off the bad eye. If it's shut off for too long, the condition that develops is amblyopia. Amblyopia has multiple causes. The three main causes is strabismus or deprivational because of congenital cataract or large refractive error. So what I want you to do now is we are going to um, uh, watch another video by Tim Root on amblyopia. And uh, Dr. Rolfs should have sent you the uh, YouTube link for this. I want you to click over and watch the two to three minute video by Tim Root on amblyopia. So hopefully that will clarify amblyopia. Um, the neural connections and the development of, of that one third of the brain um, is very, very important. And it's important to correct these conditions the earlier the better so that the neural connections can be made. The last thing I would like to talk about is nystagmus. And it's not truly a condition, but more of a sign or a symptom. And it's when the eyes make repetitive, repetitive, uncontrolled movements 
It results in reduced vision and depth perception and can affect balance and coordination. And the eyes can uh, involuntarily move from side to side, up or down, or sometimes in a circular pattern. And etiology of this, um, you know, is alcohol intoxication, uh, MS, and stroke. So again, nystagmus isn't a diagnosis in and of itself, but more a sign or a symptom. Uh, treatment, you have to treat the systemic cause. Um, eyeglasses and contact lenses can sometimes help. Um, large print brooks. And surgery to reposition eye muscles, which won't cure but help improve the head position. And that's the end of this block of instruction.